All right, so once the patient's asleep and intubated and prepped, got a mirror. Just gonna suction any spit or blood out of the airway and we put a throw pack in, just a piece of gauze with some radiopaque strings. That prevents anything from going down the throat while we're working. Okay, throw pack is in. Just do a quick profi. All right, I'm just gonna clean the teeth first so we know what we're dealing with. You can see in the mirror there, if you look at the linguals of those teeth, you can see pretty large lesions. It just wraps around facial incisal lingual caries. There's a couple small cavities in the back. We're just going to prep those real fast and then we'll do the front teeth. So that tooth in the back's got a pretty large cavity. If you can see it, we're going to just do a regular stainless steel crown and pulpotomy on that. All right, so we'll do the chin crowns now. Gonna make sure you track the lips very well. You can use a mouth prop if you like, but if the patient's asleep, sometimes I'll just use my finger to hold the, the lower jaw open. We're gonna do a clusal reduction first. And we're gonna take about a millimeter and a half to two millimeters down. And we're going to remove the decay. And then we'll prep the crown. We're going to take some off the facial. And a proximal reduction, subgingival all the way. Same thing on the distal. and then wrap around the palatal. And essentially that's the prep. We'll do the same thing on this side. Reduce the facial, break contact heat, wrap around the facial, break contact again. And then wrap around the palatal. And just round everything off. So you want everything rounded. Um, the whole prep is subgingival. And you want to make sure you take enough off the palate that the crown fits. So sometimes I'll go back and take a little extra off just to make sure. Some crowns, some crowns. I see a central right two. So that goes over pretty nice, but let's try one size smaller. I see a central right one. Perfect. I see a left central one. Perfect. So the size is perfect. You don't want them fitting too snug because it puts too much pressure on the facing. But you want to make sure that you can get them straight and aligned. These are pretty good. 
the number F is a little bit loose, so I'm going to put a little crimp in that. And we use a bird beak crimper. So just put almost up to the bottom of the number and you just give it a little push. So you want a little notch. Give it a little bit more. So almost like a heart. And that gives you a little notch that will hold on to the paddle of the tooth. And it snaps right on. So that's perfect. Take those off. You want to try not to remove them from the tooth from the facial because you can scratch the facing. I'm going to take a teeny bit more off of E just to get it to go down a little bit straighter. And we're going to do pulpectomies on both these as well. So access the pulp chamber. We'll use a 700 burr for everything when prepping these crowns. You can use 169s if you're looking for something a little bit smaller. But so you want to get the whole pulp out. And then just instrument a little bit to make sure you get the walls nice and clean. This is a paper point with four mocha on it. So there's many different techniques for doing pulpectomies on these teeth. Uh, I tend to just use ZOE, so formal creosol on a paper point, and then we'll pack it down with ZOE cones. Take out our paper points. And ZOE goes all the way in. Use a small plugger. Can I have another two by two? And I'll use a piece of cotton to plug the ZOE in just so it doesn't come out the other side or come out around the plugger. All right, so those are essentially the finished product preps with the pulpectomies. You want to make sure everything is round. You want your prep to go subgingival so that the crowns will go subgingival. The biggest mistake people make is not being aggressive enough with their preps and then the crowns are too big. But let's try them on one last time and then we'll cement. So here's the central right. Let me see the left. bite the best we can. Uh, this patient has a nice overbite, so we don't have to worry about the occlusion. So we'll cement these on. We use a glass ion immersed cement, and you can see they just get filled all the way. Make sure there's no air bubbles. Once you cement, always rubbed towards the gingiva to get the extra cement off so you don't pull the crowns off. You can use a band seeder just to make sure they're down all the way. And if you have to adjust them at all to rotate, you can do a little bit of adjustment with the band seeder. Rinse off the extra cement. And there you have it. 
whole thing takes a couple minutes.